Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Amounts of rain across the UK have been quite variable recently. Last week, thunderstorms affected parts of southern Britain, but as is often the case, they were very hit and miss. In general terms, wet spells have been more frequent in the west and the north. The reason? Because in recent weeks, we've often had areas of low pressure sitting just to the northwest of the UK. The weather fronts associated with them are more active as they push into the west and the north of the country. They tend to weaken as they head southeastwards. Now, as I run the sequence, does that general pattern change? Well, not really in the short term. There is a feature here which pushes across the southern half of the UK, brings a little bit of rain there, but often it's wetter in the north and the west. And as we go into the weekend, that continues to be the case, but there are changes taking place. High pressure is building to the southeast, and there's potentially some very warm air moving up across southern and central regions. I'll look at that a little bit later. But running this through to conclusion, that warm air gets shunted away eventually. There's a thundery looking area of low pressure pushing up from the continent. And by the end here, it's a very, very mixed and unsettled setup. There's a deep area of low pressure centered just to the southwest of Ireland. Showers or long spells of rain being a risk in all parts of the UK. The jet stream and upper air temperature sequence we can see to start off with is the low pressure centre just to the northwest. The jet stream often close to the UK through the week. It's quite strong there, the mottled shaded area, but for a time there's that much warmer air moving up from the south, but it doesn't hang around for too long if this is correct. Now, there is a good deal of uncertainty in the forecast, especially as we head towards the end of the first week and through the second week. One of the reasons for that is the impact of hurricanes. That's something that becomes very pronounced at this time of the year. And on the sequence here, what we can see is to the bottom left, Hurricane Debbie sitting over Florida. The top right is the United Kingdom and Western Europe. And as I run the sequence, what we see is the Hurricane sits around there for several days, but then as we go through next week, it finally gets a move on. It's steered across the North Atlantic, its remnants making their way towards the United Kingdom. There's a lot of uncertainty, as I say, because this is just one computer model run, how that hurricane phases with other systems in the North Atlantic, very uncertain at this point it has the potential though to bring some very moist air with it and that could only could increase the risk of significant amounts of rain in parts of the uk maybe the southern half but the devil will be in the detail and it is a long long way into the future in weather terms Coming back to the next few days, here are some charts to show the conditions which could be expected at the surface. Wednesday the 7th of August, mostly dry, close to average temperatures, cooler in the north as you'd expect and a greater risk of showery rain there. Forwards to Thursday, there's patchy rain affecting parts of the UK, there could be some rain moving eastwards across the southern half as I've mentioned, I don't think amounts are going to be great. Then, as we head into the weekend, temperatures are now climbing in the south as that much warmer air starts to arrive. 25 in the southeastern corner, according to this, still cooler as you head northwards and westwards, a greater risk of rain as well. Then, by Sunday, this has temperatures up to 28 in the south. Quite a mixed picture across the northern half of the UK, still cooler and wetter. Finally, Monday, we're up to 31 in the London area. I wouldn't bank this as being a definite, definite outcome by any means. That warm air doesn't look like it's going to be hanging around. The plume from the south, whether or not it even lasts this long is open to debate, but there is a good signal at least for it to turn warmer through Saturday and Sunday, probably Monday as this shows, but it's not definite. The charts here are from the Canadian model. I just wanted to use them to illustrate the potential temperatures on Monday. The one on the left shows values at about 1500 meters above our heads, up to 16, 17, 18 Celsius in the southeastern corner. That's 
a warm plume. It's very warm, although by the standards of recent years, it is not exceptional. The temperatures which it leads to down at the ground level are shown on the right-hand chart, 31 Celsius across the southeast and East Anglia, perhaps 30 Celsius into central parts of England there too. So there is a potential for a short spell of warm weather, or I should say hot weather, towards the end of the first week. Rainfall, the aggregate charts here for days not five from the ECM and GFS models paint quite a dry picture in central and eastern England, once more wetter in the north and the west. Moving forwards to the nought to 10 day charts, some discrepancies here. It's still wettest in the west and the northwest. The orange shading there up to 100 millimetres or even above in western Scotland. But the key difference really is the amount of rain in central and eastern parts of England. The GFS on the right shows higher totals than the European ECM. And I think really that sets the theme in some ways for the second week, which I'll look at a little bit later. The ECM is suggesting that high pressure will continue to have more influence in the south than the GFS, GEFS. But towards the end of the first week, had the deterministic models stack up against each other? Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 13th. Areas of low pressure bring in unsettled weather to the UK as I showed in the animation. The Canadian model, at this point, there's still some very warm air there in central and southeastern parts of England. Low pressure maybe a little bit further west, so some differences there in the details. The German icon unsettled with the very warm air being shoved away into the continent. The ECM, this one has high pressure being more influential as I was mentioning. Low pressure further west. and. Finally, the UK Met Office chart using older data, the latest one wasn't available to me at the time of recording, shows low pressure air to the west, the northwest, and fairly warm air across southern Britain. But taking all into account, quite a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uncertainty actually about the details towards the end of the first week. Will that very warm air be hanging on in the southeast and East Anglia, or will it have been pushed away? As you head northwards and westwards though, it certainly looks like quite an unsettled scenario. Showers or long spells of rain, and the likelihood is those wet conditions will be pushing down into the southeast. If not at this point, then in the days which follow. So that leads me nicely into the second week. Trends and probabilities, of course, at this range, using the ensemble data primarily. 16-day GEFS plot here for London. Upper air temperatures across the top to begin with. They're above the 30-year average, a thick black line that was a dip down. And for the rest of the period, they are staying close to it or maybe even a little bit below it at times. Also notice that in the shorter term, there are some very warm runs, plume-type conditions with that very warm air being pushed up from Southern Europe. But later on through the second week, those plume plumy runs disappear completely. So it could still be quite warm at times, some days, but it doesn't look like hot conditions are going to be returning. There's a rain risk which is ongoing through the second week. Some big spikes there to begin with. There could be some very wet conditions around for a time, but it's not certain by any means. I think it's a minority of runs which have shown those very big spikes, but I think there will be wet conditions at least for a time in the south. Here are the two meter temperatures shown in the data tables. The warmest conditions at the start, the red shade in there, 26 to 30 Celsius. The pinky uh, color, 21 to 25. The trend there is for temperatures to dip a little bit after the first few days and then remain fairly constant. So probably close to average after a potentially warm start. But with that said, close to average, fluctuating from day to day, still may be warm on occasion. Up to Manchester, a similar pattern, but there's more of a pronounced dip to below average temperatures at the 850 HPA level. Also, there are more spikes there along the bottom. It's quite a wet picture through the second week. The two meter temperatures following the same trends as well, cooling off after the first few days, then not much changes. Also, the nighttime lows on the bottom half there are lower than the London values were. 
up to Glasgow we don't really see that warm air extending this far northwards at least not much chance of it reaching uh, Scotland as we go through the second week it's for, it's a similar picture with most of the most of the runs there being close to or a little bit below the average it's wet especially early on lots of rain spikes there and an ongoing risk of further showers or long spells of rain as we head through week two the data table showing temperatures perhaps on the warm side to start off with as i say the really warm air doesn't look like it's going to be reaching this far off an odd run has been showing it happening but on balance it's not likely then it's fairly constant there isn't really a trend there most of the runs in the yellow or orange categories 6 to 11 to 15 or 16 to 20 cooler nights as well rainfall through the second week for the uk the charts here show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of week two they're generated from the ecm ensemble quite wet conditions are likely especially in the west the middle chart there though shows the risk of significant rainfall pushing across into central and maybe eastern parts of the UK. Forwards to the second to days four, five, and six. Probably at this stage there is a signal for drier conditions to be returning, especially in the south and the east. The greatest risk of rain, often in the west and the northwest, indicating that weather systems are likely to be pushing in from the Atlantic. The GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday the 16th has low pressure centred just to the north, high pressure over the Azores not having much influence on the UK's weather. There is actually quite a brisk Atlantic flow moving across all areas, especially when considering that it is August and not January, and that this is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs in the model therefore there is the potential for windy conditions at times through the second week this shows forecast wind gusts from all of the individual runs in the GEFS model it's for Cardiff the period to look at is between the 13th and the 15th notice that a few of the runs are going for gusts of between 50 and 60 miles an hour a large number between 30 and 50 so there's a chance I think of it being unseasonably windy through this period particularly in the west of the UK with that said it, even in the London area a few of the runs were going for strong gusts which were actually quite comparable to the maximums here something to look out for now the flip side of the coin is that the ECM is indicating that high pressure will be having more influence at least in the south and the east this chart is from the deterministic model run so it's just a snapshot it's also for friday the 16th and at this point the high pressure area from the azores has built northeastwards and it's a much more summary looking setup the changeable conditions really just in the northwest maybe the west and quite a lot of the individual runs within the ECM ensemble model were going for something similar to this. So I think a little bit of a split between the GEFS and the ECM ensembles. GEFS less favourable for summery weather, a greater risk of windy periods. The ECM drier and more settled conditions more likely in the south and the east, particularly later on. So some differences there to summarize week one changeable but rain amounts in much of the south remain quite small potentially it turns very warm or hot even in southern and central regions at least for a time towards the end of the week but at the very end wet conditions are likely to be returning week two rather unsettled weather is the most likely outcome wet and possibly unseasonably windy spells are a risk with the west bearing the brunt 
maybe turning warmer and drier at times in the south. The chance of that increases later on. So uh, there we have it. A mixed bag of weather on offer. Possibly hot for a short time, but through week two, the forecast confidence falls away as the remnants of Hurricane Debbie possibly come into play. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, then if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Remember as well to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.